Well, good evening from Banjul and welcome to the news at 10. We begin with the headlines. President Jame hits the road to consult with the masses and visit project sites as prescribed by the 1997 Constitution. Military personnel and civilian participants from 40 African countries gather in Banjul to test their military communication equipment to harmonize their interoperability. Multiple blasts in different locations believed to be the work of the military Boko Haram Islamist group claim the lives of several people in Nigeria. And NATO offers to hold its operation in Libya if the Gaddafi troops withdraw to their bases. These stories and much more coming ahead in the news. I am Fatou Kamara. Thank you for joining us. His Excellency the President, Sheikh Professor Walhaji Dr. Yahya AJJ Jame has commenced his annual dialogue with the people tour. The President was seen off at the port of Banjul by Her Excellency the Vice President and Minister of Women's Affairs, Aja Dr. Isetunjai Saidi, Cabinet Ministers, Service Chiefs, National Assembly Members, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, and a host of well-wishers. The annual tour, which takes the President to different parts of the country, is sanctioned by the 1997 constitution of the Gambia. We will keep you up to date on the president's tour in our subsequent news bulletins. The much-anticipated military exercise, codenamed African Endeavor Test Exercise 2011, finally took off in a colorful fashion at the July 22nd Square, presided over by Her Excellency the Vice President and Chairperson of the National Security Council, Aja Dr. Isetunjai Saidi. The 10-day exercise, which brings together military personnel from 40 African countries, seeks to develop command, control, and communication tactics, techniques, and procedures that can be used in support of peacekeeping and disaster relief operations. Momodu Jalo has more on that. It was with great pomp and fanfare that the highly anticipated Africa Endeavor test exercise kicked off at the July 22nd Square in Banjul. Detachments from the over 40 countries and organizations stood in military fashion with it raising its flag, symbolizing the diversity of the participating countries but united by a common desire to deepen cooperation and strengthen shared values. This training exercise is initiated by the United States Africa Command and seeks to bring together participating countries to test their military communication equipment with a view to harmonize their interoperability for future support to the Africa standby force. The Vice President and Minister of Women's Affairs who is also the Chairperson of the Armed Forces Council, Her Excellency Ajah Dr. Isatunjai Saidi, presided over proceedings reviewing the troops on parade. This was followed by a roll call of participating countries, with each country hoisting its flag, 
before an audience of government ministers, military chiefs, diplomats, and members of the general public. Later, the various dignitaries took turns to address the assembled troops, each praising the partnership and camaraderie among the various militaries. Brigadier General Robert Farrell, AFRICOM C4 Systems Director, recorded the strenuous process of planning leading up to the actual exercise, commending all the participating countries for their dedication and support. He outlined the goals of the test exercise, urging participants to strive hard to attain the goals. One of the role of the United States Africa Command is to strengthen partnership between United States military and the militaries of the African nations. The second goal is continuous improvement. An exercise provides the unique opportunity to continue refining our communication procedures in a low threat environment. Final goal is good communications. As communicators, this is what we all aspire to achieve. Good communications are an integral part of any successful operation. The Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Masani Kinte, equally underlined the importance of the exercise, particularly its potential to accelerate African integration. As security threats become increasingly apparent and complex, the Gambia's top Army General believes this exercise has an added advantage in responding to such threats. The modern communication information system interoperability should facilitate the use of military te telecommunication networks both at the regional and continental levels in line with the concept of the deployment of the Africa Standby Force. Meeting the challenge of today's threats means getting serious about prevention. The consequence of allowing latent threats to become manifest or of allowing existing threats to spread are simply far too dangerous to ignore. Pamela Ann White, America's top diplomat in the country, offered some useful lessons to the soldiers, urging them to sustain dialogue as a means to promote and consolidate peace. Given her background as a career diplomat, with decades serving as a peace corps, it was not surprised that Mrs. White chose to preach peace as the basis of human existence. We know that talking is better than shooting. We know that negotiation is better than confrontation. We know that peace is better than war. The Vice President, Her Excellency Ajah, Dr. Isaac Yaisedi, also harped on the role of the military in the maintenance of peace and security in the world, underlining the Gambia government's resolve to support any initiative in that direction. As for the Gambia, as a nation, it is worthy to highlight that we have been active participants in the Africa Endeavor programs from the very beginning. As a result, our participation has opened the floodgates for ICT and desire to reach and indeed achieve as well the cutting edge of technology in communications. Such cooperation between the United States and Africa is indeed a viable way towards the full realization, particularly of Africa's quest for total peace and security. She finally urged the participants to utilize the opportunity to learn new skills and explore the smiling coast, which inevitably will leave lasting impressions on visitors. At the end of the ceremonies, the participating countries might pass the dignitaries, drawing the curtain on what has been a very entertaining display of military discipline and skills. Mauro Jala, GRTS. Countries around the world are commemorating World Population Day. The focus of this year's celebration is the world's 1.8 billion adolescents and young people within the 10 to 24 age bracket. Asatomane takes a closer look at how this year's events will boost investment earmarked for the target group. It was on October 12, 1999, when the world's population reportedly reached 6 billion. A decade after that staggering number saw the addition of another 1 billion people. Drawn from a unique gathering of leaders from the media and other organizations, 7 billion actions is a global movement open to every organization and individual committed to addressing the most challenging issues of our times. Today, on World Population Day, I am launching a campaign called 7 Billion Actions. It will engage people on what it means to live in a world with seven billion people and encourage action on issues that affect all of us. In the Gambia, young people constitute 42% of the country's population with the bulk of them under 15. 
this order 